Hi guys, welcome to CJ's Keto Kitchen. Well, tonight we are going to begin our seasonal series and this is going to be all about Thanksgiving foods and recipes that you can make to incorporate your holiday leftovers. So our first dish tonight is going to be turkey fricassee. So come along with me and let's get started. and it's kind of a French peasant dish and Julia Child actually called it a combination between a stew and a saute. So it's usually a stewed meat, um, sometimes chicken, turkey, um, usually it's poultry and it's made into a type of stew with a white sauce or gravy and it usually incorporates vegetables and herbs and so that is what we are going to be making tonight. Um, it's very simple and it's going to utilize your turkey leftovers very well and if you believe Wikipedia this was Abraham Lincoln's favorite dish we would definitely like you to consider subscribing if you would like to catch this series and also some of our other holiday recipes that way you will not miss out so please consider doing that and without further ado let's get into it well, because this is a Thanksgiving holiday season leftover recipe, generally you will begin with your leftover turkey from your holiday. But because we are pre-filming this, I am having to do my turkey beforehand. So that's what I am doing in this step. The reason that I'm showing this instead of just showing already cooked turkey and beginning from that is just in case you want to make this recipe at some other time of the year, you can definitely use a bone-in, skin-on chicken in this step, chicken thighs. So that's why I'm going to show you this so that you could alternately do that at some other time of the year. So I'm beginning. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you were gonna skip where you were. Well, I was, but I didn't know you were jumping down that fast. I, mean, I just can't move that fast. You're moving way faster than I can move. Okay, I'm on your hands now. So what I'm doing is I am loosening the skin away from my turkey thighs because I'm going to season inside the skin because that is really where we want to season our bird at. So I'm opening as far as I can, just doing it gently to keep the skin still on. And I'm going to do that with both thighs. So you can see that I've opened a pouch there in the skin. And I'm going to salt the inside and the bottom. And I'm also going to put a little bit of poultry seasoning in as well. We are going to be seasoning our fricassee so it will get nicely seasoned, our sauce, but this will just ensure that our actual bird is seasoned. Then I'm going to take my turkey and I'm going to place it skin side down in a skillet, fairly high, about between medium and medium high, because I just want to sear my skin and then I'm going to put these turkey thighs into an oven to finish roasting. So once again, I'm going to salt the inside fairly liberally because this will be your only opportunity to salt your meat by itself. And then um, some poultry seasoning in this thigh as well. And I just kind of put it in and spread it around. And I'm going to put it skin side down as well in my pan. And we are going to leave it uncovered in our skillet and let our skin get a little seared. And then later on, we are going to use the juices that are rendered from our skin when we make our fricassee with a little bit of butter. Thank you. 
So I've removed my thighs that I browned. You can see that the skins are nice and brown. And I put them in the oven and I'm going to bake these until they're finished, probably about 40 minutes. And I have my oven temperature high, about 400 degrees. Inside my pan, I have reserved my turkey drippings from the frying process. We're going to be using those later with some butter to create our sauce. If you are beginning with your already cooked turkey from your leftovers, you can go ahead and warm them up in a pan with a little bit of butter or a little bit of your reserved drippings and you will get the same effect because when you remove the turkey from the pan, you're going to have that residual bit of drippings to start with to saute our veggies. turkey has been cooking for about 50 minutes. I'm going to let it sit here for a moment and let it rest while we begin our sauce. So to our saute pan we are going to add several things. I have half of a small carrot chopped up. This is completely optional but this is a very small chunk of carrot and I have just chopped it very finely. Like I said this is optional but for the entire dish, it actually provides a very small amount of carbs. I also have one stalk of celery chopped very finely, and I have one quarter of an onion also chopped very finely. Right here, I have fresh herbs. This is parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme, just like the uh, Simon and Garfunkel song. So, I really feel like fresh herbs in this dish are essential. If you do not have fresh herbs, you can of course use dried, but fresh herbs really make this dish stand apart. So I'm going to add these things to my saute pan with the butter and the drippings in it. let everything start to incorporate and soften. We also want to add eight ounces of sliced mushrooms. make these mushrooms whatever size you'd like. It's nice to leave them a little bit larger so that you can tell that they're mushrooms when you serve your sauce. And you can use any form of mushrooms in this dish if you wanted baby portobellos or cremini, any kind of mushroom that you like. I'm just using simple white button mushrooms in this dish, but you could use something else if you had them or you preferred them. So we're just keeping an eye on our vegetables as they saute and combine. Next, I am going to add two tablespoons of almond flour because we are going to be creating a roux and a roux is simply butter or oil mixed with flour, and this is going to help thicken our sauce. And I'm just going to stir that around and incorporate it into our vegetables and cook out the flour taste. Next, 
I am going to add a half a cup of white wine. I'm using the Chardonnay in this step because it is low in carb. If you don't want any wine in there, you do not have to add it. You can use all chicken broth, but the wine does give it a certain amount of savoriness and all the alcohol will be cooked out in the cooking process if you're concerned about the alcohol. And we're just going to let that come to a simmer. I wish you had smell-o-vision because it smells very delicious. Next, I am going to add two cups of chicken broth. And we are also going to let that come to a simmer. So right now I'm going to add just a tiny bit of 21 seasoning salute. We have all of our delicious herbs in there, but I want just a tiny bit of this. Okay, I am going to turn the heat down to a simmer and I am going to add one cup of heavy cream and this is going to make our delicious fricassee and after I have turned this down and incorporated my heavy cream we are going to cover this and let it thicken while I take my turkey off the bone so I am just taking my turkey off the bone, the turkey that I cooked. As I stated in the beginning, most people are going to begin with a finished product because this is a, a leftovers casserole or a way to use leftovers. If you are starting from scratch, like I did, you have the option of leaving your turkey whole if you want to, or your chicken if you're gonna be using chicken, or shredding it up. Either way is completely fine, and either way is traditional. I am just simply going to remove mine from the bone. It's going to go farther for us into our sauce. So that's all I'm doing here, is just removing my turkey thighs from the bone. Okay, I have removed all of my turkey from the bone, and I'm just simply chopping it into smaller pieces because we are going to be adding this to our fricassee sauce. And you can chop your meat as fine or as thickly as you like. And like I said, you could leave it on the bone if you preferred. If you are working with chicken thighs instead of turkey, you could definitely leave it on the bone. In the school system that I grew up in, we had fricassee of some kind nearly every week. Sometimes it would be turkey fricassee, sometimes it would be chicken, we even had hamburger fricassee. For some reason, the cook in my school district really liked it. <laughs> and us kids learned to like it too. Pretty much anything smothered in gravy and served over potatoes is delicious and warm and hearty, especially now that the weather is cold. Okay, our sauce has been simmering here and starting to thicken up. Now we are going to add our turkey. And I am going to raise the temperature just a bit and let it continue to simmer for about 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to need for your faux potatoes for our turkey fricassee is a bag of frozen cauliflower, either 12 ounces or 16 ounces. They're pretty similar size amount. 
and I have the steamable kind, so I'm going to put it into the microwave for this specified time, and then we will continue to make our faux potatoes. Now that we have our sauce at a, a, a rolling simmer, I'm going to put about a half a teaspoon of xanthan gum in here, but I'm going to remove it from the heat when I do that. And I'm going to sprinkle it evenly over our dish. And I just want about a half a teaspoon. And I'm just going to whisk that in so that it incorporates evenly and we don't get any lumps. And then I'm going to return it to the heat and continue to simmer. Xanthan gum just acts as a natural thickener that is low in carbs. If you don't have xanthan gum, you can also use arrowroot arrow powder. Some people can find that a little bit more easily. If you don't have either, the sauce is going to thicken on its own, especially if you make this a day ahead of time and put it in the refrigerator. The sauce is going to naturally be thicker when you leave it sit overnight and reheat it. I have removed my very hot cauliflower from the microwave, so I'm going to very carefully cut open the bag because lots of steam will be escaping, so definitely be careful. And I am just going to dump that into my blender. It's nice and hot at this point. So I want two tablespoons of butter, and I'm just going to let it sit in there on our hot cauliflower and get melty. I have two ounces of cream cheese and I'm going to put that in the microwave for just 30 seconds to make it soft. I have the softened cream cheese and I am just putting it in on top of our hot cauliflower and butter that we put in. I'm going to season it with a little bit of salt and a little bit of black pepper. I'm also going to add what's left of my shaved Parmesan. It's not much, probably about a quarter of a cup. You can put cheese in this or not put cheese in it. It's totally up to you. The Parmesan is just going to give it a bit of a bite. Now I'm going to pulse this until it gets to the texture that we're looking for in our mashed potatoes. And you can pulse it as little or as often as you would like to get to the texture that you prefer in your potatoes. And I will show you the texture that we prefer in ours. So they're nice and thick. So our fricassee is ready. I'm just going to plate it and I'm going to let CJ have a taste. CJ. Hi. So it's time for another Stick to Your Ribs home cooked meal. Yep. This is Turkey Fricassee with faux mashed potatoes. All right. Let's see. Looks really homey. Yes. I can see people using this after Thanksgiving. Yes. For the leftovers. And it really tastes like Thanksgiving. The with the combination of spices. 
it's good, baby. I think people will like will like this. Seems like it was easy to make. Yeah. Well, like you said, most people will have we'll start with yeah. Will have turkeys. a turkey already right. done. So right. since it's not Thanksgiving yet for us, and we're doing this ahead of time, right? I had to make turkey. So right. yes, that was the most intense labor intensive part. Yeah, it's good. I think the only thing I would add is a little bit more salt, but okay. that's a personal taste anyway. Right. So. Good job. I think people will like it. And actually, I would look forward to having this after Thanksgiving deal. Well, a non-keto family members could eat it too over the leftover mashed potatoes or noodles or yeah. something else. Yeah, that uh, fricass fricassee sauce, fricassee sauce. It did yes. get thicker. Yep, and it will get thicker as it sits in the refrigerator overnight too. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I, I like it. It's good. good. Good job. Thank you, baby. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us again tonight, you guys. We hope that you enjoy the fricassee. I know that we are going to, even though it's not quite Thanksgiving. This is giving us all the Thanksgiving feels. Please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so that you know when we upload our new content. We put up new recipes every week. We also have keto conversations on Wednesdays and sometimes we have ketogenic food unboxings and what we eat on keto and we are also starting to try and incorporate a few interviews so definitely hit the notification bell so you know when those go up we are also on social media we are on facebook instagram twitter and pinterest and we release teaser recipes and photos about foods that we are currently making and currently eating and that is cj's keto kitchen also, all of our recipes are cataloged on our blog, and that is cjsketokitchen.com, and there you will find all the full recipes, most of which are printable. Additionally, all the macros will be there and other information that you might need to make these recipes or any other recipes that we have already made. So hopefully you'll stick around for our seasonal series, and we will see you next week. Bye.